vision is your imagination directed by the Spirit of God. If you can't imagine it, you probably can't do it. If you can imagine it and you're dependent upon God and His grace and His people, then that which you imagine spiritually may well indeed come to pass. So use your imagination with me. We're on the bridge. And as we're approaching West Africa, you will see one or two large ships coming out to meet us. You will see cargo ships, flotilla of small fishing boats coming out to welcome this Christian Charities Hospital ship. This is a big ship. This will allow us to do things we've only dreamed about. We will serve twice as many people in so many areas. In addition, this ship was purposefully built as a training ship, multiplying the surgeon's efforts of hope and healing by having other African professionals observing multiple surgeries multiple times, learning by doing, and then doing under close supervision. So when we talk about doubling the number of people served, it's based on reality. Our four core values fit in very well, straight from the words of Jesus in the Gospels when he was asked a trick question, what is the greatest commandment? Number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like the first, love your neighbor, love each other, love one another. Third, we've added two more, be a people of integrity, let your yes be yes, no deceit. If you don't have integrity at the end of your life, you don't have much. And the last one, excellence. We should do everything, whether it's in the galley, whether it's food preparation, whether it's cleanup, whether it's laundry duty, whether it's surgery. We should aim for excellence because that reflects the heart and character of our God. His example, literally, the blind see and the mute speak, the lame leap for joy. People are discipled that come. You know, the change in, in the patients and their families and their communities is amazing, but I think one of the greatest changes is in those that participate. It changes us all. Children with bow legs and knock knees, it's pretty obvious when you see them uh, how they walk, that they cannot walk uh, very well and they cannot run. Uh, some of them are ashamed to go to school uh, because they look different and uh, they get mocked. <laughs> In Europe or in the developed world, uh, they are treated very early, so they usually don't require surgery. But here they are recognized very late and appropriate treatment is not available. So they develop into extreme forms which you wouldn't see in uh, Europe or America. We are able to use a very simple operation actually to put those legs straight and uh, then put them in a plaster and when they heal hopefully their legs are completely straight and after some weeks of physiotherapy 
they will be able to walk properly again and run again, play football and do all the things that they couldn't really do before. So it is a dramatic uh, change in their life. Most of the patients that I talk to is that they have no dream or they have no hope. But after surgery, there is hope in their mind. There is dreams that are supposed to be realized. This is the exciting part. This is her leaving the hospital. Almost like the first step in the future, really. Once back in their village or their home, they can be proud of themselves or part of the experiment. <laughs> When I look at what Mauritius does in, um, in the area of reaching out to the people in Africa that we call the poorest of the poor, these are people that can never get the type of access that is needed to that particular type of surgery. And you see them selected by Mercy Shields and cared for for the number of months that they will be with us. I think the biggest thing that you notice when you work in Mercy Shields or on, on the ship is that it's a completely different working environment to anything that I've experienced before. And that's because the love of Jesus is palpable on the ship. The presence of God is everywhere and I think that has been the biggest difference in me in my life on the ship if I ask anyone for something there's never a no there's always a let me see what I can do for you there's always a let me try there's this attitude of can do because we've got Jesus on our side and I would say that that's been the biggest or the most life-giving experience for me the hospital I see out in West Africa they have nothing and you can imagine Mercy Ship is a good district general hospital with a lot of latest equipment. Put it on the ship and arrive at the shore. You know, those patients in these countries, they have no experience of what a hospital. And yet we can bring them here, show them not just surgery, not just surgical healing, but love, human touch, human respect, equality, encouragement. And then we change the life by removing what they've been waiting for so long. And they come out of it, walk down the gangway, new life ahead of them. Wow, I don't think you get any better job satisfaction like this in the world. It's a heavenly job. Over 90% of the population of Sub-Saharan Africa just can't access surgery. There aren't enough surgeons, aren't enough operating rooms. That's not true in Europe, in the US. 
not just surgery bringing hope and healing. It's the whole crew members, the first interaction, the first smile, the first touch. Just like Jesus using his healing hands. I'm sure he used his healing smile, although he doesn't mention much in the Bible, but I'm sure his facial expression, the smile, the touch, that started healing. We follow the 2,000-year-old model of Jesus. We're all here with a common goal. We do believe that he's called us to serve others. We come to listen, we come to serve, we come to partner. So take the steps. Just go to the Father and say, is this what God would want me to do? Life is too short to just be sitting on the couch and watching Netflix all day long. And that's great, but if you feel an urge or if you feel a small calling to do something different and make a difference, I think you need to follow that. You know, you need to follow your heart. And I think, you know, the world uh, climate right now is really kind of making people recognize that life is transient.